Hey guys, welcome to Trending brought to you by Airtel. My name is Nancy Isimwe. It's always a pleasure to have you join me on this show. My guest is waiting to talk to you. Don't go anywhere. After this commercial break, the show begins. <music> on my hot seat, I have the one, the only energy god. You, I have to add that to your name. Listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to scan us when you walk. Oh no. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Oh my god. Never gosh. washing my hand today. <laughs> I held Nasty, how many times down this seat? Probably three times. I think it, we should do like a metamorphosis because from I the very see. first one I remember that I look scattered. The second one I, I looked chaotic. More scattered. But this one I <laughs> trust me. If inside you, joke, guys, you won't get that you joke. Inside that. joke. Inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> well you look amazing as Thank always. You. I love what you're wearing. Every time I have you on my show, I'm just like, okay. <gasps> yeah. So yes. much fun. This segment called the Style of Day segment, it's not okay. changed. Tell me, what are you wearing and what is the inspiration behind it? You know, I just said to myself, trending Nancy Sime, mm -hmm. who is like, you know, a fashion queen, a national treasure, a monument to mankind. I don't know if I I'm a fashion icon today. I just wanted to wear something that I felt would look colorful, mm -hmm. you know, with a colorful disposition, which is like an expression of my personality, mm -hmm. outlandish. An extension of my individuality, mm -hmm. and then above all, ah, ah, I'm here to compliment my sister over here. <laughs> Even if Nancy wore rags, she'll stop traffic. Oh my gosh, mm. well, you look amazing! I love it. <laughs> so, today we'll be discussing the topic the beauty of being unique okay. and staying true to yourself in this generation. A generation with so many voices, so mm. many opinions, so many, yeah, opinions. How do you stay true to yourself? <laughs> So many opinions. I always say it any day, anytime. Those opinions are not my reality. Mm. I mean, we call them haters. Mm. If we're going to get to that, mm. H A T E R S is an acronym for hating at those experiencing real success. Mm. Mm. But I mean, for me, keeping my head above water, staying authentic and true to myself, being mm. as original as can be, mm -hmm. and not paying attention or giving heed to what I think other people are saying or right. how they're judging me because I'm constantly judged mm. every single time and growing up for me at that point i felt like i was constantly judged even on the streets i mean i'll walk past and everyone is talking about me and then when i hear people laugh it it's would get scary. to me yeah. i would say ah they're laughing at me this yeah. is this was me growing up mm. and then even when i went to church back then mm. i was always worried that they would walk me out which of course always happened mm. and then even in school when i was you know i finished from uni like on campus there was always that feeling that trepidation of ah they will walk me out pretty soon mm. So I was never really comfortable, you know, and I got this like upfront confrontation. People mm. would always, you know, be in your face they made me feel like you're not supposed to be here because mm. you're unique, you're distinct, you don't belong here. I remember back then that every time we went to do like gigs that were of like, you know, high caliber, mm -hmm. there was another producer from a very reputable channel that's, you know, on terrestrial and local TV. And every time I got a recap, the person would come and manhandle me in a way, like, you know, rough me up and... I mean, there was nobody to talk to about that. I mean, how would I go to my office and say, oh, such a person is harassing me. I didn't even know what harassment meant at that time. To me, then I was like, ah, okay, so I need to stay out of this person. Because usually when I rush maybe to the toilet or some person will come and try and rough handle me. So I said, okay, henceforth, before I go for any events, I will do my business and then be on the carpet. But even on the carpet, this person was bold enough to just always grab me and you? touch me inappropriately. And I was like, okay. Um, so this person is doing that, this person is really bold, how on earth am I supposed to handle this and who am I supposed to talk to about this? So I might be digressing from your question but I'm getting to you know what I'm trying to say here. So I thought to myself, okay so what's wrong? Why is this person doing this to me? Is it because I am different from everyone else? Is it because I have got like an identity or you know I'm trying to build a brand that's you know unusual? Okay so I thought to myself, do I have to change the way I look? So that person will leave me alone because to people around it looks like a joke because I had to make it look unserious. I look for the human thing. So I would laugh and say, leave me, leave me, you know. But then I was just always worried. Ah, I can't be caught in a separate place with this person. Ah, 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 you know. So I think I face my fears head on. Mm. That's one of the things that has really propelled me into the very vibrant and strong minded, strong willed human being that I am today. Amazing. I hope I answered the question right. Yes, of course. Okay, uh -huh. of course. You know, Amazingly I have a right. How are you able to hone your many talents? Because you're a man of many talents. You do it yes, all. Yes. How are you able to hone them? I've been in the game for close to three decades and I've worked without a PR team behind me, a glam squad, no manager, no assistant. I feel like if you want to get anything done in this country, do it yourself. Mm. 
So mm -hmm. I've been immersed in everything. Yeah. I've been like hands on deck. I mean, from the rounds of acting, I started with acting, you know, back in 1994, you know. And then from acting, moved to modeling. I did a lot of modeling, commercial, even runway. At that point, I was like the youngest, the skinniest, mm. you know, and tiniest male model. But I think the designers just liked me because I brought personality on the runway. Mm. So they always just wanted to have me on board. And let's just have this infectious energy around. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I also got into stage when I got into school, into uni. Like I joined the theater group, Theater 15. Mm. And then we did like a lot of stage production. That opened my eyes to like a new, you know, because stage is a different way of life, you okay. know. That then I got into a couple of soap operas back then. Mm -hmm. Along the line, I started dancing as well. I used to dance for a lot of artists. Surprisingly, I used to dance for the likes of Rugged Man when he did Baraje back then. Two shots um, with the song Thief, Ole, Carry and Go. Um, I even danced for a band. <laughs> yes, ha, I don't want to know. This band was run by Dr. Ola Balogun, who is like one of Nigeria's foremost you know, filmmaking pioneer, right. you know, with the likes of Herbert Ogunde. So he had a band, I think he was just doing music for the fun of it, okay. and for the fact that he loved music. So we would go to different places to perform, I would dance, and I remembered one time that we went all the way to Alagbado to perform at a popular TV house, mm. and it was a live show, and when we finished, you know, we had to put all the equipment in his Jeep, he had a small, cute Jeep, mm -hmm. and then there was no space. And then the backup vocalists, who were like the girls, had to sit in the car. So I was the only one stop. And I had no transport money. And this was like midnight. So I had to hang on the back of the Jeep. Like the back. Oh and you know the, the rover is like an old rover. I had those iron railings at the bottom. So I had to make sure that my foot did not, you know. And I held onto it from Alagbalo to Fade. Because he lived in Fade back then. So in all of that, I knew that it was going to lead into something, but I didn't know what. But I was just trying my hands at so much, and I wanted to be away from my house because my house, at that point, oh I grew gosh. up in a family house, was not conducive for a young artistic creative <laughs> who was constantly pulled down and made to feel like S H I T. Pardon my French. Mm. So, with dancing, you know, also in the mix, modeling, acting, presenting came along, the line, and it just happened by chance. Mm. As I said, making me feel like, you know, I was absolutely inferior in the organization was i was the lowest earner everyone was earning 100k 65 i was earning like 45. i was like the errand boy i'll run and go and buy people food i was writing everybody's scripts i just didn't have a program to suit myself i think they were also concerned about putting me on screen how, how would people how would the audience react is this not a bit too much maybe it's like you're feminine should we indulge and then the first gig they asked me to do god bless his soul the late sam sultans album launch at um, the French Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I was so excited. I prepared, researched, did just asked, called everybody I knew that knew Sam Sultan, got all the gist. I went, did a great job. When I got back, my job was torn to shreds. They made me feel again like SHIT. This is nonsense. This is wrong. We are, we are on probation. And so I didn't get my salary for that month. And then I sat down. I thought to myself, OK, I have to make this work. What am I going to do? So I stuck to my gun. And I said, look. I am going to make this brand synonymous with my name. And that's how I came up with the show before the show, which was the Red Carpet Show. So, suffice to say, I revolutionized the Red Carpet culture in Nigeria. But then, as heaven would have it, my very first gig that, you know, just put me out there on the map was a movie premiere, The Widow, that Stella Damaso did by Kingsley Ogoro, and it was at Planet One. And Kemi Aditiba, the director, King of Boys, was one of the Sound City VJs back in the day. That's the music channel I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And she was called to do the job and she was like, no, 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 no. She got there, she was like, I don't think I can do this. There was so much going on. So they just called me, you, where are you? I was in the office, you know, I was just chilling. Come, 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 come. So in my haste, I got dressed, I got a taxi. As I was rushing, I forgot my, you know that phone that flips, the Ericsson, mm -hmm. that one? Mm -hmm. I forgot it in the taxi. I was, what? so when I got there, I was still trying to deal with, hey, my phone, get, 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 get on the back of it. I was like, so sorry, what's going on? You're asking me, you should be prepared. Stupid question, stand there. And then you see, that was one of the first events that they brought a the crowd. Right. So everybody that came on the crowd would scream. So that alone was distracting. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? I was worried. And then the first person who walks in, the first lady of Lagos back then, Chief Olu Remington, who, who you know was nice enough to let me talk. I just talk at my foot. And I said, Mom, if you don't talk to me, you follow. Hey, if I was your son, what would you change about me? And then that got her. She said, ah. Fine, but all these things, all these things. So I knew I, so I, so I stylishly asked her what she was there for. Mm -hmm. So she gave me information about the event. 
Oh, that she's a patron for widows. She wants an initiative to movies about widows. That's how I knew what was happening. Yeah. So from then on, pa, 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 I was on top form doing all the interviews and it would go. This was a beautiful fairy tale. When the event was over, she sent her onto a her protocol officers to call me. So I thought I had messed up. Like maybe I was forward with some the recap. So I went, I was like, I'm so sorry, Your Excellency. She said, no, 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 no. How long have you been doing this? I said, ah, this is like my first office. No, you were born to do this. And she just opened her bag and brought her fat envelope and gave me. I said, take. Hey. I just quickly. And then the producer called me. What was she telling you? That you're a disgrace. You're an embarrassment to the channel. The woman gave me 50k and my salary was 5k. You know, but that propelled me to, and then I realized at that point, okay, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it work. Amazing. And so fast forward to now, the rest is history. From a thought to an act, an act to a talent, talent to a character, character to an identity, identity to a brand. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Nancy. What are some important things that life has taught you? Do not go back to what broke you. You must always take back your personal power. Back then, and I was worried about sharing it, but right now, I mean, mm. I'm my first, I really don't give a hoot. Mm. I, there was a major event that I got to handle the red I was a headliner, the red carpet headliner. Mm. And it was, you know, a big event. By the time they said, oh, we need to go inside, you know how it is when the event has to start. But then they told me, make sure you interview the people who, you know, come in late, you can go to their seats and talk to them. So I was doing that. Everyone knew my face. A lot of people just knew me. They didn't even know the brand I was, but they also this crazy boy, oh, so, whilst I was doing my interviews, one armed personnel with like two other guys just came and said, I never should come. So I just, I followed and they said, oh, and they took me to an office and there was this larger than life, influential personality sitting on the chair, you know, ah, that you and he was on the phone. So I just thought to myself, wow, interview, ha, okay, oh, content. This person has never done an interview. It would be so amazing to catch this person. He just said, sit, So I sat. I was like, my cameraman, where is he? So my phone was quickly texting. Come now, come now. They took me to the back. Come, come to the tent. And then my cameraman tries to and said, no, you should wait outside. So when he finished, they said, okay, how are you? So the person says, okay, so what's your name? I said, my name is Derelisa. What channel do you work for? Because I see you. I see you. I see you. I said, ah, yeah, I work for this, you know, social music channel. He said, okay, so do you have a license? You know, he was asking a lot of very technical, intimate questions about the brand. Mm -hmm. I was responding, so I felt like, ah, it was a bit of a bore. I didn't get the information. I didn't have the information on that. So he said, okay, okay, okay. So he stood up. And then he now said, well, stand up, stand up. Ah. So I thought, okay, the interview happened outside. Mm. So we followed, and then they said, okay, I should enter the car. So I entered the car, and then I was like, okay, they so said, so um, are you going to make me happy? I said, yes, 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 I would love to see it. <laughs> yes, I can see the look on your face. I said, yes, yes, sir. But I won't ask any nonsense questions, sir. I, don't ask. I ask a lot of fun questions. My interviews are always very... Um, you know, see me, you know, say naively. My interviews are very light hearted. Funny question, you will laugh, you will laugh, I promise you. I said, I said, no. I mean, like, are you going to, so, like, here, you know, so I it still didn't click. And I was like, oh, yes, sir, that, you know, the channel I work for, you know, it's a music lifestyle channel, see me, say. <laughs> I said, so, you know, we don't usually ask questions. So I said, I said don't worry, sir. So I was already, can I quickly call my cameraman? He said, no, no, no. So the next thing, this person unzipped his fly and said, and I can never forget that line, make it go down. Hey, that's when I said, hey, I don't get that one chance. So I was like, I'm sorry. Um, the next thing I got, that's why I said, there's nobody that can slap me again. See, I learned the art of self-defense. I got the baddest slap in the history of slaps. And because he had rings on, he tore my cheek, like, as if it, it was like a flash, a blur, and then I just went this way. Get out of my car! And then, you know, the second car just pushed me. So I just sat on the floor. I said, hey! Okay, so I started thanking my lucky stars for getting out of that one. But then you see, the problem was I had nobody to share this with because I didn't know, I couldn't have gone to the office to say, this is what I went through. They were like, so how did you That's not get okay. there? No, I know. But one of the things I, I picked from that is eventually, on the long run, mm. I've run into this person severally. We are, you know, we've laughed about it. I think I took back my personal power. Yes, because I felt that this person must have thought if I ever see them again in public, I would cower and be, you know. And I went straight. Ah, how far? What's going on? Remember this? Ah, you need that, you know. I just felt, okay, laugh over it and move. So for me, it's always about taking back my personal power. And you see, it's not about being, not also about being vulnerable. To share your weakness is to show that you're vulnerable. But to show that you're vulnerable is also to show your strength. Vulnerability is, it feels like truth and sounds like courage. 
truth and courage aren't really comfortable but they're not weaknesses mm -hmm. you know and so that's one of the things i learned not only take back my personal power but to never be weak and i vowed that i was never going to find myself in that sort of situation again one and secondly i learned the art of self defense they don't burn it that's why i put out a nice note of warning you talk crap about me I, 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 i'm not going to come on social media and uh, you know i would catch you in person jack you and just give you one nice <laughs> Don't let the heels and the hair fool you. Ah. What legacy would you like to leave behind? A legacy that I have built as many success stories as possible. Mm. Because you see, I'm a fountain, I'm not a dream. Perhaps, you know, we're slightly handicapped in terms of trying to make ends meet and survive. But we're at a point now in our lives, things are good. And so I would make sure that my family lacks no. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Really? What are you working on? What should we expect from you? Ah, plenty. I don't want to toot my horn or blow my trumpet. Let's just say I think at this point, what is they really working on? On being a better person, on building amazing people around me, and of course extending my light, positive energy, and beautiful spirits to as many as can be touched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very important to me. Yes, yeah. of course it is. Sorry, I don't know why that thing just came into my head. It's okay. Glad you could share with us. Thank you so much. Hey guys, welcome back to Trending, brought to you by Airtel. I still have Derele on my hot seat. Yes, so we are about to play some games. First off, is our fast five question segment. I'm sure you're already familiar. Uh, but this now sounds new. So okay, let's. I'm ready for it. Okay, bring it on. Well, I'll ask you a couple questions about yourself when you answer them more than sixty seconds. That's really 60 fast. Seconds. Okay. Ready? Yes, yes, yes. Time to. All right, great. Time starts now. What is the meanest thing someone has ever said to you? Oh, you bloody lesbian. Wow. I don't know if that's mean. <laughs> oh, you'll never amount to nothing. Oh, wow. Yeah. How long does it take for you to get ready in the morning? If my call time is 12, please, I must be up at 8. Because I'll play music for one hour and disturb the peace. Okay. What Nigerian TV sitcom family would you be a member of? The Johnsons, definitely. <laughs> Not Jennifer's Diary. That's a bit too mad. Too serious. The Johnsons, definitely. What would you do with 15 minutes of no fame? Of no fame. Ah! Walk naked on the streets of Lagos. Yes, and be running and be screaming in people's faces. <laughs> running helter skelter. Ah, that would be so good. Ah, I right. live for that. I live for that. You're right. What supply in your house is running low? Supply. Ah, should be granola. Okay. That's what? my oatmeal. Oh, it's finished. It finished this morning. Okay. What is your favorite Halloween? <laughs> Harley Quinn, baby. Okay. I have the total ensemble. <laughs> ah, with the hair, the shoes, everything. Okay. What is the song you hear the most? Oh, the song. Ah, that. I, oh, um, has to be. Oh, yes, I know it. Um, it's Winona Oak, who's like a European artist. Mm -hmm. It's called them. Um, so the first line is. I'm thinking about my money TikTok, and all the things seconds. they can buy me. Sorry, yes, it's just me thinking about my money. All right, where make. would you want to retire? Barbados or Sebi and Montenegro. Amazing, thank you very much. I'm sure we definitely fast. exceeded 60 seconds, but you tried. Yes, I was talking too much. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> too much is never enough. All right, now it's time for the tribe. I get to ask you a couple of social media abbreviations, so you just give me the full meanings. Okay. All right, first one, O M G. G O D, goodness. Okay. G O A W D for some people who funkify it. Okay, O F C. OFC, of course. Oh, amazing. You're getting it. JSYK. 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 Jesus save you now. <laughs> Just so you know. Just so you know. Yes. We have some riddles for you. Woo! Two riddles, actually. Okay. First one I can be hot, I can be cold, I can run, and I can be still. I can be hard, and I can be soft. What am I? That has to be water now. Got it. I got it. Ah, yes. I'm going to say hot and cold. And Great. Nice. I'm water too. Amazing. <laughs> Next one. I am a ball that can be rolled but never bounced or thrown. What am I? A ball. Not yes. an egg. Um, a I'm a ball that can be rolled -A -A but never bounced. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can be rolled but not bounced. Or thrown. Uh, hey, whoa. What's with that now? Be a double What has ball in it? Ah, I'm lost on this one. I Listen. ball. Ah, I know riddles are so weird. My mind will be safe. Ah, eyeball. Ha. Ah. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? My eyeball game now. <laughs> oh, you still did well. I tried. Really I tried. Well. I passed. Of course. Like eighty-five percent of no, the time. Uh, you did yes. very well. Welcome back to Trending, brought to you by Airtel. I still have really on my hot seat, and he's about to read some nasty comments. Please yes. read. I'm always ready to read the best them. Way you can. Ah, ah, now wow! All these expired celebrities are seriously trying to renew followership. 
they really bought this car himself or just organized small friends to pose that he also has fans. Oh my gosh. I haven't go hard to enter shop. Guess what? When he bought that car, I even thought my friend just bought a car for herself. Mm -hmm. See the simplicity of my mind. So I was running to congratulate my friend on my own birthday. Like, oh my god, that was my friend Sharon. I said, oh my god, you just bought a new car. Because I saw a lot of balloons in the car. So I thought the balloons were for me with the cakes and the stuff. And I just thought she just got a new car. So I was so excited. Truth be told, I did not buy this car for myself. Now, not like I can afford that luxury, but it's not on my priority list. This was a gift from my friends. They all came together. They even told me how much they all put together. They told me people they reached out to and people that were like, ah, ah. A very close friend of mine surprisingly said to them, why are you buying him a car? Doesn't he have a car? Mm -hmm. Ah, and this one that can afford to even buy me 10 cars, but it's fine. Yeah. But yes, so truth be told, heaven no go hard to enter. I don't already enter the heaven because I know like the car like gifts. I'm still stunned with the car safe. I, it's still like, it's surreal. Okay, next one. Think twice, my bro. He allowed himself to be afflicted. He started as an actor, but later started his cross-dressing like a joke and he ended up mad. He is not gay, he is possessed. Well, the acronym for mad, as I always say, is making a difference. So thank you for that compliment. You better leave God out of your nonsense. Gay runs. Ah, ah, in quotes. Ah, ah, G-A-Y. Gorgeous and young. Thank you for calling me gay. God will never ask you to date your fellow man in order to change him. At 40, it's better but you I feel like to the person said you're not gay, you're possessed. So how is the person out back? Is it the so same person? The same person now says you better leave God out of your nonsense. Gay runs. So God will never ask you to date your fellow man in order to change him. At 40, it's better you give your life to Christ. Find, find a decent, you're, you're spelling safe, come safe, you're decent, get brighter grammar. Find a decent lady to settle down with, you're not getting younger. If they bring you here now, me and you will stand here now, you go be that person who born me. Because, hey, I am ageless and tiny. Anyway, I have Christ, because Christ keeps me moving. Find a decent lady to settle down with, you don't find that as easy as it seems. You're just typing in there, it sounds easy. But it's not. Ah, so calm down, I'm not getting any younger. Look me where we're now. The third one. Okay, okay you allowed your cut. I'm glad this comment is here. You've seen it before? To... No, no, no. Uh, but I just read the first line and it's something I like to talk about. Uh, you allowed your cousins to beat you up and insult your mother when you were 20. Then, boy, you're really broken. Now, I lived in a family house where we had nowhere to go to. I could fight back, but there was no way I could fight back. Because if I had fought back, they would have thrown us out. And where would we end up? My mom was just teaching in a small school. My dad was out of a job and I had two sisters. So it's not about not manning up. Yes, I felt like a coward at that point, but I could not fight back. When you live in a house, you know, you're made to feel every day you don't belong here, but do your worst. Mm. Would have ended up on the street. So, then boy, I'm really broken. Yes, I was broken by that um, happenstance because my cousins always ganged up against my mom, but my mom always fought back because, you know, woman to woman. My mom tolerated no, I know, she tolerated no bull and crap. Again, my mom's a foreigner, so, I mean, they always made her feel very unwelcome. But for us kids, who were the youngest, myself and my two sisters, for every time they couldn't get at me, they would transfer their aggression on my younger sisters and beat them to a pulp. So to stop that from happening, there was no way we could fight back. Because if, we, if I had the wherewithal to move my family out of that, I, I would have done that without thinking twice. Hence the reason for working so hard. Hence the reason for getting them out of the house. I even remembered when my grandma died, God bless her soul. Uh, my dad was in the house and he already started putting the roof whilst he was in the house. He just woke up and saw like rubble pouring on the bed. We had to get everybody out of the house. So it wasn't about my cousins beating me up and insulting my mom when I was 20. Yes, I was 18 when that happened. But broken, uh, yes. Let's just say I was not born with a silver spoon, but I worked very hard to create one. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you so much. Yes, we are all broken, but we manage to peace. Sometimes when things are falling out of place, they may actually be falling into place. Of course. Yeah. Just, every time I talk to you in interviews, just so much to get out of it. Thank you. I'm so glad that you turned out positive, full of life. You know, I always say something, you know. People who have gone through real pain are yes. some of the kindest people. So I don't see why someone who's gone through pain uses it as an opportunity to bully others and say, oh, after all, I've gone through the same thing, so mm -hmm. they should be able to go through it. And it's not an excuse. So it's so good that you can, out of all your experiences, still be there for people yes. and be positive and be kind. It's amazing. Well done. Thank you, Nancy. Well done. Ah. Worthy of elimination, trust me. That's Amen a role model. That. That's a role model. I don't know who your role model is, but someone who's able to come out of anything that they've been in is definitely a role model, regardless of your opinion, if you ask me. 
Thank you so much, really. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. I had a blast. I'm glad you did. I'm yes, glad so. you did. <laughs> All right, guys, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun with my guests, really. I had a lot to talk about. Um, definitely a lot to talk about. As you know, you can join the conversation. Yes, follow us on Twitter at HeatTV, on Instagram at Official Heat TV. You can also follow me on Instagram, if you wish, at Nancy Isime Official. Until I see your pretty faces next time, do not forget that I love you, but God loves you more. Bye-bye.